Well, my tickers, the news tickers and title crawls happen to be a big hit. People are loving them and I'm getting some great questions. So the first one comes from YVR Photoderm. Can you add your own logos? Absolutely, I'll show you that. And Alan Joseph wants to know about default fonts and we'll talk about that. So let's talk about adding your own logo. So right now they're all self-contained. The um, the Mogerts are, or the titles are self-contained, but now if you're gonna add a, a separate uh, ping file, Photoshop or Illustrator file, uh, then you have an external file to add to it, but that's no problem. I'll show you how to do that. So, okay. so. I'm gonna grab the uh, globe only because it's similar to the uh, logo I made that I'm gonna bring in. So here's my globe ticker. And we'll go back to the beginning, the globe pops up and then the ticker comes out. We'll select the, the uh, ticker and go to the essential graphics edit. So we're in the, in the graphics workspace and here's where the globe is. So if you don't want the globe on, you can turn it off or delete it completely. And now nothing is there and the uh, ticker just comes up. So if we want to add something to this, make sure this is selected you're in the edit. And then this little button comes in new layer from file. That's the easiest way. You can also go to the graphics and choose new layer from file. This will bring up a dialog box to get you to open it. And there it is. I made a fictitious company called Browser Video. And when it comes in, it'll come in at its full size. Um, I have a whole tutorial about working with vector graphics. I made this one a little bit smaller because it's so it's easier to handle. But my general rule of thumb for logos, if you're doing them in Illustrator, is to start with a 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel file. That way, any scaling will always look perfect. So this one, I think I, I set it to uh, 500. So this comes in at the top. So you can see browser video there. You can grab the side corner, scale this and now drop it where you want. Um, I also have this brought down. So if you go to your button editor, it's this one here, which is snap in program monitor. And when you have that turned on, this will snap in the middle. If you don't, you can freely move it. But if it's snapped, then it's going to snap. See how that's right in the middle-ish? Okay, so now when I play this back, the ticker comes out of there. So we haven't animated that thing, but we sure can if we want. Something like this around uh, like the globe I, I had, I just scaled it from zero to 100%. And the thing you have to watch out, I'm gonna zoom in here, 400%, and then you gotta find it all the way over here. This little thing in the middle, that's the anchor point. That's where it's going to uh, animate from. The anchor point is, is by default is in the center, but it's really easy to move it. You can move it back. Um, but if we scale this now from the center, it looks like it's, it's growing out of nothing. So I'll zoom into our animation here. So remember, that's where the globe was. So the ticker starts right around here. So what I'm going to do is find that guy and hit the scale. So I've added a scale keyframe, which is, it's not 100%, it's 38.3. That's the, I sized it by eye. I just moved it down and that's where I like it. So now I'll take this back to the beginning and drag this to zero. So now it'll start from zero to 100 and then move out. You wanna tweak this a little bit, make it look a bit more organic. Right click on the first one, ease out. Right click on the next one and ease in. Now it just looks a little bit more organic. Very nice. Ooh. And let's go back to fitting in the screen. There it is. So the next step, you're not done. I mean, you, you are as far as it's in the timeline and it's gonna render and output fine, but you don't wanna do that every single time. Take my globe, put it in, remove the globe. So let's delete the globe and resave this. So I'll go back over to here, delete the globe, and then I'll right click in the timeline 
and export this as motion graphics template. And we'll call it browser video ticker and click browse and I'll stick it in my graphics. Um, you can include a thumbnail Th that will, um, well, you don't want to do it for these because they're a minute long and it would actually have to render and embed a minute of video. So don't do that. You can also set compatibility, warn if this template uses fonts that are not in the Adobe fonts, warn if the graphics uses any effects that are not included, and warn me if the motion graphics template is not compatible with Premiere Rush. So the first two are important if you need to share something outside of your computer. That other person doesn't have the font or that other person doesn't um, have the uh, the effects that you happen to have to make that work. Um, we have none of that, so we're, it's not a problem. This is not compatible. Well, this one is compatible with Rush, but generally I didn't say my new tickers were compatible with Rush because, and this is really unfortunate and confusing, it's because of the crop effect. When Adobe decided to develop Rush, they actually built a crop effect as a regular effect. A regular effect is called an intrinsic effect like scale, properties, and, and uh, opacity. So I wish Premiere Pro had that, but you have to add it. So the two aren't compatible. So as soon as I add the crop effect to Premiere Pro, it will break in Rush. Eh, whatever, okay, click okay, done. Now it's not gonna show up here because I didn't wanna put it in, in mine, but it, you would make a browser video folder, add that as I showed you in my other tutorial. Now that's in there, you can drag and drop it on there. Piece of cake. Um, let me show you one other little uh, tip here. If you wanna have some fun, let me get the simple slant because it's not as wide. Okay, so here's the simple slant. Let's look at this. It's the text here, uh, the, the ticker text in its own uh, group. And then also the shapes. There's a left shape and a right shape and the bar itself. Well, the left shape is an independent graphic that moves across the screen. So watch this. Let's bring in the browser video logo again, stick it at the top. I'll scale it down, I'll put it, let's go to the beginning, I'll put it down here in the middle, see how I get lines that are showing up in the middle? I'm gonna now force this logo to be animated by the left hand slant as it moves across the screen. How do you do that? You select whatever object it is and down here in the pin to, you choose left, and you have to tell it how you're pinning. I'm gonna pin all the movements. So watch this now. I hit play. Whoop. Now the only thing is, it's too high because I started too high, but the great thing is, there are no keyframes on this at all. So if I move this down here and move this back, it's going to follow that. Now, because the slant doesn't go all the way down, I would have to keyframe that. But I wanted to quickly show you how you can make one thing independent of another thing. So we could start, again, we'd have to zoom in, find out where that comes up, boop, 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 right there. So I would add, I don't know, I don't know if this will work. I think it can. You can have keyframes on it and it can follow. Let's find out. So I'll put a position keyframe here and where it doesn't go all the way out, I'll change here and let's add another keyframe. Let's push go and boop. Oh yeah, it works, baby. So I didn't have to animate that twice. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that pin two is, is uh, it's really flexible. It can have issues though with scaling things and, and uh, you know, depending on what it's behaving, what it's pinned to and how that behaves. But in this example, hey, it works pretty good. So the next one is for uh, Alan. How do you set default fonts? So let's go to the hearts. That's probably one of the craziest fonts that I used. So we'll go to edit. There's the ticker and the font is uh, Annabelle. 
So let's just choose anything. Let's just, this is Anton. So that changes the font in this ticker. It has no control over hearts and that's a good thing. You don't wanna accidentally be changing the ones you have um, already created. You wanna update them. So if you wanna save this one, same as before, right click on this, export as a motion graphics template and you could call this hearts two or, or something else. And now every single time you, you drag it out, that's the font. That's an easy way to, to update. It. So lots of ways to tweak this and play around. Um, but I'm very encouraged by the, uh, uh, the attention that we're getting here on uh, video reveal for the tickers. Uh, something like that is a pretty big uh, uh, test for me because it's probably a couple weeks of work to draw all that and, and figure that out and uh, do a lot of testing and uh, hopefully it works. So when I put it out there, I didn't know uh, how it would be accepted, but people seem to love it. So the other tutorial I made was just a full tutorial, a general one on, on how to use them and how to, to uh, add them and, and uh, change some things in the timeline. These are a couple of specifics. If you have more questions, um, then I can answer them too. Uh, I know I got a question on using the pen tool. Okay. I'll do, I'll do a tutorial on the pen tool. And, and the reason I'm saying it like that is, if you come from Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects, InDesign, and you've honed your skills, as I have, for 30 freaking years using a pen tool, the pen tool in the, in the Essential Graphics is the worst pen tool I've ever used in my freaking life. You can draw stuff as I've shown you, but it is not easy. And here's my little secret. Almost every complicated thing I draw, I draw twice. Once, completely in Illustrator, because I can be efficient. I can draw something in 30 seconds in Illustrator that can take me 20 minutes or more in, in Premiere Pro. It's just the way it is. I know they tried really hard to make the pen tool as, as good as they could, um, and they based some things off of Illustrator, but the Illustrator pen tool is un freaking touchable. Nothing touches that. I can draw a thousand miles an hour in that thing and then I slow down to a crawl. So it's like that that camo background, that whole camo background was drawn twice. Completely drawn in Illustrator so I could focus on the colors and the patterns. It, 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 it wasn't just random drawing. It had to look good but look like camo. A whole thing twice and I did it way faster in Illustrator. So I will uh, come up with another tutorial outside of the tickers just on how to use the pen tool. So there you go, folks. There's a, a couple of updates. Thank you very much to everyone who's bought the tickers. If you don't know what we're talking about, head out to the, uh, the uh, store on videoreveal.com slash shop. Pick up the tickers, pick up the uh, split screens that I've got, and I'm working on some more split screens, some Zoom style split screens with 50 screens, 40 screens, I got a 20, 25, a 22 I'm doing for someone else, so I've got a whole bunch of these that are coming out. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to you and make sure you're happy with the stuff you got.